What's good, everybody? And welcome to another episode of the Gifts from Gifted podcast. It's your host with the most. My name is Gifted, and we're back for episode two. Um, I appreciate all of the love and the encouragement that I got from the first episode. Um, I plan to make this a consistent thing again every Monday. There will be a Gifts from Gifted upload on all platforms. Um, if you're watching this on the YouTube side, I appreciate you. Shout out to you. You get to see my face for the entire time. But if you're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other platform, I really appreciate that as well because I want to grow this on multiple platforms. So shout out to everybody who's even tuning in, listening to me rant and talk about things in life, right? So for this week, what I really wanted to focus on was money management and the concept of life in general. Um, I'll probably touch on money management a tad bit later. I do want to have a full podcast episode dedicated to that. I think that's very important. But for today, I really want to hone in and focus on life as a whole. Um, What made me come to that realization this week as I was pondering the two was primarily something that happened to me this week. So I work a job. For a government corporation, I'm not going to say which one, but I do that. And um, I basically deliver things for people or whatever. And within said profession, I had a moment where I was inside of the truck and someone came into the truck. It was very weird. It never had me before, ever, right? And what happened was, I was sitting in the seat and they opened the back, basically testing out the door lock to make sure that the door was either locked or open. And they saw my face and they closed the door and they ran off. And in that moment, I froze up because it was the last thing that I expected. And I was very nervous. Um... Life is such a frail thing. Like, it's this thing that we take for granted. We're so used to waking up every single day. We just expect things to always go our way. So when I was in that position where something like that happened, I didn't know how to respond or react. I just froze. And, like, they saw me and we locked eyes or whatever. And then he said, oh, shoot. And then got out of the truck and walked back, and I saw him and his friends go into their vehicle and go. And part of me was like, I could press the issue, I could find like the license plate, I could do all this and all that, I could report all of it. But in the moment, I was relieved. That was the first feeling that came over me, because in that moment, I realized I could have lost my life. I could have died. And like, death isn't something that I always... Think about now in my older years, but when I was younger, growing up, death was so normal. It was weird. In my community that I'm from, I live in Detroit, um, things happen to people all of the time. If people die, there's like dolls, toys, plush toys, a bunch of things that people leave in the spot that they were murdered in or just like died in to pay respects. There's shirts that people wear that have pictures of that person, the names of that person, and it's meant to remember them while they were here. So for me growing up, I just saw that around so much. I became numb to it. And that's not something that is normal. We shouldn't be numb to trauma. We shouldn't be numb to seeing things like that happen. But in that moment, I wasn't numb. I was like very conscious of my life and the danger that I could have been in. Because again, I didn't know what was happening. I was literally in my truck, turning the AC on. It was a very hot day. I was doing a whole lot of stuff. And then literally, they just opened the back of my truck door. And I didn't really know how to respond. Because I'm just thinking about how wrong things could have went. Imagine if he opened up the truck... He had a gun. I scared him and he shot and killed me. I could have died 
in the truck. That could have happened. It didn't. And like, I thank God, I thank the powers that be that that like didn't have that happen to me. But that just makes me just think about life as a whole. Because again, there's so many situations where I would have died or something else crazy would have happened, right? So to me, in that moment, I just felt relieved. I felt happy to be alive. And that happiness is something that a lot of times when we're at our rock bottom in life, we just completely forget about, like how much worse things can be. And if anything, from that experience, I feel even more motivated to keep doing what I'm doing, to keep pushing through the anxiety and the depression that I sometimes face with what I'm doing, with my direction in my life right now, because I understand the feeling I get from it. I feel happy when I'm creating content. I feel like it's a a big mountaintop to climb, of course, but I feel complete in a way because I'm constantly working at something that will never resolve itself. Like, this is not something you do where it's like, you do this task one day, okay, you're done. This is something that can be a constant area of growth and it's consistently satisfying. And in that moment when I'm in the truck, I just thought about that. Like, I felt fear because I felt like I I hadn't done everything I needed to do yet. I hadn't accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish. It didn't happen for me. And I felt so afraid of that moment being taken away from me. And I just sat there. Like, they left. I sat there in the truck. I moved the truck up, and I just just drove. And then I parked there. And I just, like, sat with myself for five to ten minutes. And then I got right back out there. And that's the crazy part about it. I'm so used to negativity around me and things of that nature that I'm accustomed to having to move on. And I feel like as a black kid growing up, especially in our community, with all the injustices that happen on a day-to-day constant basis that we can never control, we can never fix, we can never somehow just turn the tide on these things, we're so accustomed to moving on. We're so accustomed to people being outraged in the moment, rioting, doing all of these things, but then two weeks later moving on, that we have adapted to where we move on. And I don't mean to speak for the whole black community. That's not what I'm doing. But I'm talking about the mindset that has to happen for us to coexist in society, to not just completely rebel, go rogue, you know, like really turn to war, bad thoughts. I'm saying to to exist in this realm, in this sphere, that is the United States of America and not lose our minds. We have to find a way to put it to the side, to have it be this fleeting thought that comes back to us, that stays etched in the back of our brains, but not at the front. And I don't know why, but like after that moment, I've just been thinking about that. And like life has always been a very interesting thing to talk about because there's so many questions. Why are we here? What is our purpose? What makes us tick? Why are we not dead right now? And like we never really face these things head on. Sometimes we just bury ourselves in what we think our purpose is, work, school, other trivial things that don't really matter in the long run. We just fill ourselves with these things to push those thoughts back until the end when we're at death's door, when we're about to be in that predicament or that situation. And for me, I've never been a fan of that. I've always wanted to think about these things and have these conversations and these thoughts. And for me, at least, reading at an early age gave me a door to look at it and peek through other people's stories and what they went through and how I perceive their situation and how I put myself in their perspective like it made me think about it from those layers and then when you peel back life those are the layers to think about 
Because the people that came into the truck prepared to, to steal whatever was in the truck, that doesn't necessarily make them bad people. Like, for all I know, they could have been on their last dollar trying to make their situation correct. Or they could have just been some young kids playing around, trying to steal some stuff, but not trying to get too crazy with it. That's also there too. But where you're at in life can dictate so many things. The environment, going back to a broken home with no real family support. So you're doing certain things just to fit in and find friends and find people that treat you like family. Take you win like family. Like, like there's so much context to their life that in the moment I have no idea of. I'm robbed of. They don't know me. I don't know them. To them, that truck was a vehicle to their success. A vehicle to satisfying that itch. To like riot and rebel. Like that that was just something else for them. So why do I have to then say, well, because this is happening to me. That makes these people inherently bad. That makes these people, people I should be mad at. I didn't feel that way. I didn't feel a way towards them for doing what they might have done or were about to do. I was just grateful that nothing happened. And I think that's perfectly fine. But every time I I just close my eyes and I think about all of the potential scenarios that could have happened, it just makes me like super grateful even more. And again, like I try to take all of my blessings in. Like this podcast and this platform that I'm building on YouTube and, and like what I'm going for in this gap year. Like the, these are things that sit with me and make me feel like I'm not working hard enough. I got to put more. I got to be more consistent. The podcast wasn't on Apple Podcasts. I got to get it on Apple Podcasts. The Spotify link was broken. I'm not scheduling my tweets out in enough time. I'm I'm overweight. I, I'm not losing weight hard enough. I got to be better. Like that constant chase and growth for perfection is something that has dominated my life in school, out of school, trying to find partners. Like like that that type of chase has been ingrained into my head. It's been something that is similar to just breathing. Like how we naturally breathe, that is how competitive I've been for my entire life. And my dad told me that, my mom told me that, but also just I took that in. I felt like I needed to be better than people in a lot of regards. And I felt like I needed to show that and prove that to myself almost. Like I deserve to be at Michigan. I deserve to be in these spots. Just because, to me, growing up, I felt robbed of certain situations. Because my dad, like, he he spent a lot of time working and putting a lot of hours and effort into myself. Even though he wasn't always there from, like, a nurture perspective, he did a lot to provide. And when I thought about that growing up, that made me feel like I got to be perfect. I got to be this jibby or this gifted that he he wants me to be to, to, you know, make his work feel like it was worth it, to make it mean something. And then initially after taking that value or that perspective on that, I just wanted it for myself. I just wanted to be the best jibby that I could be. And... All of those thoughts that I'm talking about in the moment where you are potentially about to lose your life or you have some type of near death or or crisis, whatever it is, you're not thinking about that. You're not thinking about everything that went into that moment because it's fast. In the moment, you're just thankful for life. You're, you're happy that you're here and you're rolling with the punches. But then sitting down and reflecting on it, it made me just just like have sensory overload with how bad things could have gone. And that's why currently right now, at least for myself, I'm not I'm not sitting in that vacuum anymore. I'm putting my head forward. Like from this day on, 
I'm going to enhance my efforts even more. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to pump out more content. I'm going to stream more. I'm going to figure out this school situation. I'm going to I'm going to go to Canada and do certain things. I'm I'm going to be the best person I can be and I'm going to maximize my life while I'm here. Because what would have been really bad in the moment is if instead of me being grateful for how far I've been in life, if I felt regret. If in that moment I thought, damn, this is how my life ends in a truck for a nine to five that I'm working and I didn't do X, Y, or Z. And I didn't try X, Y, and Z. And I didn't reach X, Y, or Z. I don't want to leave this universe, this body, without accomplishing things like that. I can't. I can't do it. And I have a lot of sleep, sleepless nights. Like I, I stay up and I try to create. I try, I try to be this battery that just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. I'm recording this podcast, by the way, right after a three-hour session on the locker room, which, by the way, if you're listening and you like basketball platform, we talk about hoops and all that or whatever. But I I just did that. I just wrapped that up. And I have every right to go to sleep. I, I have to be up tomorrow to take my mom to go get eye surgery because she has problems with her eyes. I got to do that at, at 8 a.m. in the morning. It's far out. But I'm having this conversation because it's organic and because I'm pushing myself. I'm not giving myself wiggle room. I'm not giving myself excuses. And I'm not saying anyone owes me anything. But I'm trying to be the best that I can be. I'm trying to maximize every opportunity and chance. And for me to be consistent and be this person that like talks a big game but but needs to follow that up, I'm doing that here. That's my vision. And like... That experience again. I'm I'm happy it didn't go wrong, but but I'm taking the positive away from it because the negative could have been so negative. It could have been so bad, and the fact that it wasn't bad means the positive happened. So I'm gonna focus on that. The positive happened, and I'm gonna take the most away from that situation as I can. I promise you. So if you're listening, take your blessings appreciate them, love them, hug them, hold them dear, and then build on it. Don't let that be like the one moment like, oh, that was great, and then just go back to just moving the same way. No. Sometimes when something like that happens and you're that uh, grateful that things went well, you got to take advantage of that and build off of that and change your ways and and fix things up and, and go about things in a better way. So I'm using that as a call to action while I'm already in action. This is this is something telling me, okay, you're doing better, but do better. Go harder, go faster. So that's what I'm going for. Um so yeah, that was the biggest thing on my mind with life. And again, like it's it's so weird because I'm talking into a camera and I'm saying things that people might not pick up. If you're in the comments at all, uh, tap in on a YouTube channel. Let me know how you guys feel about everything that I've just said about life. All those things. I don't know. But but just, I'm learning as I go. So again, I really appreciate all of the, the peace and confidence. I don't have show notes. I literally just go with what's off of my head, what's organic to me. This, this platform and this podcast is a way for me to just talk and just be myself. Just, just say whatever comes to mind. Obviously, I try to keep it centered around a topic, a focus, but I just want to be authentic to myself and just be real about who I am, where my thoughts are coming from and like what what pushes me. And right now, ever since it happened, that that has been the moment that has been pushing me. So, that's what I've been on, man. Um as far as money management, again, I want to have another episode where I dive into the specifics of money, where it's like, how can you grow? How do you make money? How do you like, how do you restore credit, repair credit? I'm very interested in those things. But you know what I'm gonna do? 
for this podcast, the first half I focused on like life stuff. The second half, I want to focus on the concept of money because I actually think that ties back to life. Um, what my mistake was as a younger kid is I associated money with life. And the reason why I did that is because I saw my dad, I saw my mom working very hard for me to just have lights or be in some nice house or just eat good food like uh, oranges, greens, all that type of stuff. And I I was a very frugal person who was cheap. I didn't want to spend money. I was so afraid of spending $10, $20. Anytime I got any money from anybody, I would just hold on to it. I didn't care about clothes. I wore uniform, like black baggy clothes cheap headphones like I was I was cheap to the fullest degree and not because I was necessarily terrified of money but I was terrified of the of losing it of of not having enough to support my people or specifically wasting the efforts of my parents or my family to give me that and like I was very possessive when it came down to money because of that ideal. And that ties back into like how how I've changed so drastically. Because when I was younger, anything that I got from my parents, I respected. I just did. Like my dad would get me shoes. And instead of me wanting new shoes every three to four months, I would wear those shoes for years. Two or three years. Downstairs to this day, I have a pair of LeBrons that I've had for like five or six years. In condition. The soles are not coming out because I take... Like, so much care and appreciation because they didn't have to do that. I could have been on the street by myself having to figure things out. And every day for me when I was younger, when I was looking at things, I thought about that. I thought about how how grateful I should be to even be in that, in that position. To be born in this time frame where I can take advantage of certain things with technology and be so grateful for everything that I have. So anytime it came down to things like that, I just appreciated it. I just did. So I never spent money. But now that I'm older and I'm in a position where I'm making some type of money. I'm still poor, by the way. Let's not get it twisted. I I still got to get my stuff right. But I'm just saying, now that I'm in a different position, I now look at it as money isn't life. Life is life. Money can get you things that can boost how you feel about your life and potentially make your situation better. But ultimately, you can have all that money in the world, but it's not going to replace everything that's in life. Money can never be the substitute for what a good life is. There's a ma- there's many depressed millionaires who have millions of dollars, nice homes, nice cars, nice watches, all that stuff. But they're buying all of these things to make up for their soul, to to make up for the things that they're missing on a daily basis in their life, to make up for the void that they have of real friends, of people that care about them. Those things are missing, and they use money to fill that void. I was never of that mindset. I more so associated money with love. I associated you spending $100 on me in any scenario was you loving me because you worked hard to get that hundred. That's how I looked at it. Now I look at it as money is a means to an end. You have to be comfortable with spending money because spending money, A, is how you can make money, but B, spending money is also how you shed yourself away from that, you know, from, I can't talk, shedding money This is a bad podcast. The point I'm trying to make, sorry about that, is when you have money and you're spending it, you're you're building on other things. I use money to further what I want to do in life, right? That's what I do. I've spent a good amount of money on the camera. I spent a good amount of money on the lights in my room, the monitors, the gaming chair, the PS like like all 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 of these purchases that I've made has been for a distinct purpose to grow off of 
and use that as a platform to expand into other things, into YouTube, into into Twitch. Like that's what I've used it for. And to me, that is a healthier way to do it compared to just buying things that are kind of disposable. Like clothes are important, right? But I still don't have as much of a value on that as I do this because the these right here, these are things I'm going to use every day. And these are things that are going to be able to have some type of return on investment for me later on down the line. So the way that I view the the purpose and the value of these things are just totally different. And I was so frugal when I was younger. Like, if you gave me $10, I wouldn't spend any of that 10 I would just hide it in my books. I would hide it in my room. And I would just hold on to it. And I would be scared to spend it because I had a fear of losing it. I was just hoarding money, just holding on to it over and over and over. But after I left the country and I went overseas and I saw all of these things happening with people and and how they spent money to better themselves, I looked at it as a tool that you can use to add on to your life instead of it being the thing that takes over your entire life. So now because of that mindset, I have a healthier relationship with money. And it's a funny contrast because my parents, in retrospect, don't have that same relationship with money. Um, I think they took advantage of their situations, but I also think they kind of took money in a way for granted. And And by the way, let me like fully expand on what I mean. I'm talking about being responsible with money, having a healthy approach to fixing your money issues. Because the biggest thing that you need to know before you even think about revamping your life and and changing things is you have to address how you view money and what your relationship with that is. Um, For a lot of people, and this doesn't just speak to my household, but this speaks to people in the world in general, they have money issues and they're afraid to face them. We all have had family members who might get a bill or something that is requiring them to spend money or whatever, and they put it to the side. They got bad credit, they just ignore it, put it to the side. They have a a ticket that they have to pay, put it to the side. Because it's easier to ignore our problems then face them head on, especially when it comes down to money. And a big reason for why that is a thing, in my estimation, is because money in a way is such a personal and private thing. Money feels like an infiltration on you. It feels like you have to sit there and really evaluate who you are because sometimes your spending patterns and your habits can tell a lot about you as a person. And... I was so aware of my parents' situation as a young child. I wanted to help. I wanted to find a way to, to make their lives better. Let's create a budget. Let's let's save money. Let's let's um hold on to this and build on it. But I was young. I didn't understand the allure of certain things, the the chasing of a lifestyle in certain areas, the the constant providing to to raise a to raise a child who has hyperactivity disorder. Like those types of things were things I wasn't thinking of. And that desire innately to deal with those things and then not face the the truth or the reality of your situation was because it was easier to cope that way with those things. And it's not a healthy way to handle it. And again, now that I'm older, I took those situations firsthand and I learned from them. And I promised myself when I get in that position where I'm making money and I'm dealing with it, I'm not going to be in that same predicament. Now, granted, jury's still out on that. I'm 23. I, I'm employed right now, but I have to go back to college. That's going to have to pay itself in some way or some form. This YouTube stuff. This uh, Spotify podcast creative stuff might not pan out immediately. So there's still, you know, things that I'm going to have to go through, especially when I move out in my own hardships. But I'm very aware of that reality. I'm very aware 
of that situation. So for me, when it comes down to it, I am trying to take those moves to prepare myself for that reality, for that situation sometime and someday. Right now to this day, I'm building up my credit. And I promise I will have a whole podcast episode or just a solo video on my channel explaining exactly what those steps are. But for now, just focusing on on what money is and why it's so indebted into us is important to me because that that also ties back into like our community as a whole. Because money, again, is like the key that you use to get out of your situation, to, to take you to another situation. And it can better the quality of your life, yes, but it doesn't necessarily make you. Money doesn't make me enjoy basketball. Money doesn't make me enjoy content creation. Because right now, I'm not making a dime from anything I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing all this content. I'm uploading it. For free, I'm, I'm hoping it goes somewhere, but in reality, this could flop. This could be absolutely nothing, and I'm having this conversation in a microphone for four people to listen to, but I want to talk to those four people. I want to make my voice heard to those four people. So to me, it, it doesn't matter, and I do it anyway. Money doesn't make you. You make money, and like I know that's such a cliche way of looking at things, but it's real. I I I make money, so it's on me to A, understand that reality, but B, leverage that to where I can live sustainably, but I can also not let money overtake me. Not let money overtake my whole outlook of of, of life and moral decisions and things I want to do. It has to be a, a happy medium and a healthy balance. And growing up, I wasn't really taught that per se, but I saw it in the way my friends viewed money. I saw that in the ways that I saw my parents view money, take care of money. And to be honest, that was big for me because being that vulnerable with money and understanding what it can do to you at a young age really is why I'm so outspoken now to talk about other things that have nothing to do with money. Like, traumas or things that have happened in my childhood, I can openly talk about because of having to face money. To me, fear of money was my biggest thing to deal with. And once I got past that, everything else felt easy because I'm facing the music about real stuff that I'm dealing with, right? So that was my vessel. I don't know exactly what yours is but keep that in mind you make money money doesn't make you so try to keep that in mind healthily while you're here um i don't really have show notes but those are the two primary things that i want to talk about on this episode of gifts from gifted next week will probably be a hour long but i gotta be honest like these past couple of days that's just all I've been thinking about that has really been etched into my mind. Um, Next week is either going to be a full on podcast that's showing you how to grow money, how to restore those situations, or I'm going to talk about self-esteem, which could, could really take us down an entire rabbit hole of other things. But I don't feel like just talking mindlessly for an hour just to fit the hour requirement to like make this super long for no reason. I feel like every podcast has a purpose. And I think on this podcast that has been currently 34 minutes, I feel like I've I've lived to that purpose and I've executed on that point. So if you listened all the way, shout out to you. But at the same time, five stars on Apple Music, Spotify, whatever platform you on. And also, like and subscribe to, be, to the YouTube, man. That's the way I can get to the money. So that, that would be nice. You know what I'm saying? Subscribe, like some videos. I got some content coming. I really, really do. But I do have to get up in the morning. So I'm going to end this show here. Uh, But again, I want you to know that you are appreciated. And I don't take this like, I don't take, I don't, I don't take this for granted. I don't. I appreciate every bit of people that pop in here five minutes or 10 minutes of what I got to say. It feels weird looking into a camera and knowing that someone is listening or watching 
me say words and they care. So again, like the fact that it's even people doing that, I appreciate that in itself. That's wild to me, right? So I appreciate you. And I hope that no matter what type of situation that you're going through, any impasse that you're in in life right now, just know that things play out a certain way, but you have to have the confidence in yourself to go on despite that. And I want to give you that confidence through some of my stories and through some of those life lessons and those types of situations that I've been in to expand, you know, expound and really talk about my life. So I'm in the podcast here, but I appreciate y'all for tapping in and I'll catch y'all next week on Gifts from Gifted. Peace out, everybody. Have a great week and stay focused. We got some things to do. Peace out, people.